Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just worship you. <clears throat> Praise you. <clears throat> Exalt your name, O oh Lord. <clears throat> we give you all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just checking to see if my... Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The sound is working. I'm watching for comments. I... Um, want to thank you for being here with me today. If you um, are here, say hello. Let me know you're watching and participating. I, um, I do this every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. My name is Autumn Nims, and I um, do this because the Lord asked me to. <laughs> And it's another way for international women's ministries to um, wipe the tears of our sisters globally. Um, my voice is a little off today. I apologize for that. I think it's the pollen outside. But I praise the Lord that I can be with you today and share the word of God with you, share some things that are on my heart that the Lord has been showing me, and just excited to um, spend some time with you all. So come on in, take a seat, open up the word of God to Psalm 139. Hello, Sister Autumn. Good morning. I'm glad you're here with us. Um, I've had something on my heart since the beginning of the year and I've been waiting for the right time to share it and I feel like the Lord has um, released me to share a dream with you that I recently had and I believe it. Um, the dream spoke to me personally but I also believe this dream is for you as well. A um, couple of announcements, and just a little bit we're going to pray, but um, I want to share this dream with you and what the Word of God has to say about it. But uh, in the comments section, you'll notice that I pinned a giving link for Pakistan. Today, Pakistan is on my heart. We are wanting to give out more Bibles to believers in Pakistan. So if the Lord should lay it on your heart to give the word of God to a believer, um, you can just click that link that's pinned in the comments section and you can give there. A Bible for an adult is um, $8 and a Bible for a child is $7.50. So for the price of a Starbucks coffee or one of those, you know, gourmet coffee shops, um, I'm not having gourmet coffee today. I'm just having black coffee. But um, you can give a Bible to a believer in Pakistan. Now, I'm not going to guilt you into giving, and I'm not going to guilt you into giving up your cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> um, I don't believe the Lord does that to us, and I'm not going to do that to you either. But all I'm saying is, um, for the price of a cup of coffee, you can give the sword of the Spirit to a believer in Pakistan, a woman, no less. <clears throat> Um, we have a sister that works and represents International Women's Ministries in Pakistan. She is an evangelist, and she rep, she does about two events a month <clears throat> and um, averages about two events a month with the little bit of support that International Women's Ministries sends her. She, she helps causes that money to go a long ways, but Bibles are expensive. 
there, unfortunately. I think $8 for a Bible is expensive. So it's ex it's especially expensive um, for Pakistanis because the average income is 6 or $7 a week. So just be in prayer that we can send many Bibles to Pakistan and flood the Word of God into the cities of Pakistan. Amen? Amen. So next week, I will be on vacation. Me and my husband are leaving um, Sunday. We will be in um, parts unknown, but just spending some time with family and um, taking a chill pill for a few days. And so next Thursday, I will not be on. So um, just wanted to let you know that. But our weekly prayer will be taking place next week. And so um, you can look forward to our weekly live prayer event. And I can't remember who is doing next week. Um, it might be Joanne Wolf, and it might be on Friday. So you can look forward to an announcement from that coming soon on the IWN page. Like us, follow us, share this live teaching right now because I believe this is speaking into the prophetic times that we are in and God is truly showing himself right now, showing himself to believers, giving believers dreams and visions and prophecies to share with the world because his coming is imminent. His coming is soon. And I believe that now more than I ever have. I've sensed it in the spiritual realm. I've prayed for it. I've asked the Lord to hasten his coming. But in order for him to come, every ear has to hear about him. Everyone has to be given the opportunity to hear about Jesus. And he says that in the word that all will have heard. And so I know there are some unreached people groups, but let me tell you, the times have expedited this mission. I believe the window for IWM right now to go into all the world and preach the gospel and share the good news and encourage believers. I believe the time is short. I believe there is a window there of time that the Lord is pushing IWM into the nations so that everyone can hear about our Savior and our King, Jesus Christ. The time is drawing nigh. We must be ready. We must keep our lamps trimmed and burning. We must be focused on winning the lost. It's not about what our government can do for us anymore. It's not about what world leaders can do for the world right now. It is about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it is urgent. It is an urgent message to the nations. Have you heard? Have you heard about the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross to save you from your sins, to restore you and bring you back to eternal life? Have you heard him? Have you heard his name? Have you spoken his name? Have you invited him in? Because let me tell you, we all will one day bow before him and confess that he is Lord and Savior. Do it now. Be ready because every eye will see him and everyone will know that he is Lord. And so I pray that today you will take, oh, something happened here. I'm sorry. <laughs> My screen did a blip. I apologize for that. I hope that you will take some time today to meditate on the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, let me know. I will get you a Bible. Um, 
meditate on the word of God, read it, absorb it. Do I understand it all? No, I don't understand it all. But I understand enough of the word of God to know that this book was written about a God that loved us so much that he gave his only son to die on a cross and to save us from our sins. Amen. So a little warning here. My granddaughter is in the next room. I have her set up with some snacks and some um, a television show and she may come in here and interrupt. I asked her not to, but she's three years old. So we know what three year olds can do, right? Um, so I'm praying that doesn't happen, <laughs> but if it does, we'll just work with it and keep going. Okay. All right. So this is the dream that I had. <laughs> yes, Autumn, real life. <laughs> For real. Um, before the beginning of the year, um, probably in early or mid, late November, um, I was on vacation with my husband. And I had a dream. And this was the dream. And I've been pondering and meditating on the scriptures that the Lord gave me from this dream. I shared it publicly in one place in the Philippines. Um, and the Lord, I did it then because the Lord told me to. And I'm doing it now because the Lord told me to. Um, but in early November, I was with my husband. We were traveling to see family. And really that whole week I had a series of dreams, but this one in particular has really um, stuck with me. And the Lord continually is working in my spirit on this. And I feel like the time is now to share it. So in my dream, I was sleeping on my side in a fetal position. And a hand came in and touched my heart. And when the hand came in, my whole body would light up. And it, it was as if there was a glow about me. Um, and not only did my whole body light up, my whole body would come awake. And so I would instantly wake up when that hand came in and touched me. And when the hand came in and touched me, the numbers 23 were said to me. And then a second time, as soon as the hand was removed, I went back to sleep. The hand came in a second time and touched my heart. And the, the same thing happened again. The words, um, the numbers 23 were spoken to me. My whole body lit up. There was a glow about my whole body. And I can't really explain it except that my body looked like it was not fully formed in the dream. It it was formed. You could see that it was a body, but it just, it didn't look like I was fully developed. That's the way I would say it. And the numbers 23 were spoken again. Well, the hand was removed and I went back to sleep. And when I did not revive, um, when it, it was almost like that hand was trying to resuscitate me. And when I did not revive and I went back to sleep, the hand of the Lord began to search around my house and go through my house. And it made me very uncomfortable in the dream. I just remember feeling vulnerable 
in the dream, I remember feeling undone. I remember feeling exposed, if that makes sense. Like I was being exposed for something. And I woke up from the dream and it troubled me. And when I woke up from the dream, the Lord spoke two scriptures to me right away. And it was Psalms 139.23. And I want to read that to you. Um, the Lord said these scriptures to me. I didn't know to go look for them. I didn't know anything except this is what was said to me. And so I immediately went and read what the Lord said to me. He spoke to Psalm 139.23, which says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Then the Lord spoke Psalm 23, verse 3 to me, and I'm going to turn there. And Psalm 23, verse 3 says this, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, I went back and I read the entire um, Psalm 139 all the way through. It's a short portion of scripture. I would encourage you to read the whole thing. Um, but it has really resonated with me the past few days because as I've been meditating on the Lord and the scriptures, I can tell you that the Lord has been doing a searching and a knowing in me. And I praise the Lord for that. Um, the knowing part. You know, I think sometimes we tell ourselves that the things that we think about, um, the, the um, compromises that we have allowed in our lives, um, that the Lord doesn't know about it or maybe it's not that big of a deal or maybe you have rationalized it away because it's you know it's not as bad as someone else's sin I was telling a friend on the phone the other day that um, we were talking about what the Lord is doing in our lives and what he's saying right now and I said well honestly I said, the Lord has really been dealing with my thoughts, really been dealing with my thought processes and bringing correction immediately to me when my mind goes down a path that it shouldn't, when I'm being highly critical of someone, which can sometimes be a problem with, with us um, prophetic people because we can see into things that Sometimes others don't, and that's just really a call to prayer, and it's, for me, I have to take my thoughts captive many times and say, I'm, I'm going to be praying over this situation or this person or what the Lord has shown me. I'm going to dedicate this time to prayer and being a watchman over this situation. <clears throat> And the Lord is really doing a work in me right now with that, being sensitive and in tune with what he is saying to me. And, and I will tell you, our, you know, our outward actions, we, we can cover those up pretty good. You know, people around us won't necessarily know by our outward actions or our outward appearance of things that are going on in our personal lives or in our heart or in our mind, right? Um, and that is where the Lord has really been doing a searching and a knowing in me, in my heart and in my mind. What, have, what are you thinking about, Autumn? What, what, is you, what is your heart turned towards right now? Because it's not turning towards me the Lord. And so he's been bringing correction in that area. And it's 
so far it's been okay. I will tell you that. <laughs> but I know for myself that when the Lord starts working on something, it goes deeper than that, right? Um, because deep calls to deep. He wants to take us to deeper places in him. And we can only do that if we deal with the shallowness in our hearts and minds. And um, because a lot of us can fake it on the outside. A lot of us can be a good Christian on the outside, but but what is going on inside of here? What are you meditating on day and night? Is it God or is it the scriptures or is it, you know, what someone's done to you? Are you, you know, harboring unforgiveness? Are you thinking bad thoughts? Do you, are you predisposed to telling yourself stories about things that aren't necessarily true, but you you let your mind wander there. Um, that's that's where I've been, and so the Lord's been doing a searching and a knowing, and He's been addressing the wicked ways within me. The revival. After I had that dream, the Lord said revival. That, that was the word he gave me. And, you know, the hand touching my heart, the hand touching my heart and reviving me, that is what the Lord desires to do in the church for 2023. He wasn't just leading me to skip scriptures that had the number 23 in it, Psalm 139, 23, Psalm 23, 3. He was addressing to me in that dream what he wants to do in the body of Christ to bring about revival. The prerequisite to revival is the searching and the knowing and addressing the wicked ways within us. There can't be a revival unless we repent, period. Repentance has always brought revival. And if you look in biblical times, every time there was repentance, a revival followed. And, you know, one, um, one uh, account in the Bible really sticks out to me, and that is Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a short book. You could read it in a couple of days. But the Lord brought about revival and restoration in Nehemiah's time after the people consecrated themselves to him, got in his word, hungered and thirsted after him, and then revival came. I would encourage you to read Nehemiah. Nehemiah addresses the steps to revival, if you will, the process. First, Nehemiah prayed. Then the Lord gave him a vision of how to bring restora restoration to the Jerusalem walls. He surveyed the problems. He surveyed and looked at the issues that needed to be repaired. The wall needed to be repaired. He took a look at it. We need to take a look at ourselves. We need to allow God to take a hard look at our broken places. And as Nehemiah was looking at the broken down walls, God gave him a vision of restoration and how to bring a team together, how to bring the people together, how to cast that vision of restoration and revival before the people. And do you know that everyone, it said whole families, took a portion of the wall and rebuilt it. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. The Holy Spirit wants to do a searching and a knowing and a rebuilding in your lives. He wants to bring about restoration, but first there has to be prayer and there has to be repentance. 
He doesn't want us limping around as broken Christians anymore. He wants to restore our joy. He wants to restore our passion for him, our hunger and thirst, our drive for him. I sat down with a missionary last week from Turkey and she said, when I first came here to the US, I was highly critical of the church. And she said, I noticed that the American church was a lazy church. And she said, I really had to pray about being here. She said, in my country, people are dying for their faith. In my country, people are persecuted for just mentioning that they are a believer. She said, in my country, in some places, you cannot worship openly. But people are willing to speak out, to pray, repent, call on the name of the Lord, because they want restoration for their nation. They want revival in their nation. The hand on the heart. God's hand on the heart of the church. He desires to resuscitate the church. He desires to bring the church back to life. But we first have to call on his name. We first have to, pr to pray and allow him to search and know us. Psalm 139 is just a beautiful, beautiful picture of the Lord to us. It is really God's perfect knowledge of us. It is his perfect understanding of our lives. And I mean, if you, David opens up with, Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts from afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all of my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue. But behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. The Lord knows everything about us, and somehow we sometimes think we're hiding things from him. But he knows it all. He is an all-knowing, omnipotent God, omnipresent. He is everywhere at once. The Bible says he never sleeps, he never slumbers. He watches over every detail of our lives, even the very hairs on our head are numbered. I lost some hair in the shower this morning and I'm sure the Lord is perfectly aware of how many hairs I have left on my head, right? There's no place that we can flee from him. That's what Psalms 139 says. He knows our every thought. He knows our every word and our every move. He knows what our intentions are, what the intentions are of our heart. God directs us no matter where we go. We think a lot of times we are doing our own thing today. I'm going to go down this path today. The Lord is still with you. And even if you go down the wrong path today, he can walk you through that wrong path. He will be with you. He, he is with us when we make our mistakes. It says he's with us when we lie down and when we get up. He knows everything about us. God knows no hopeless or helpless situations. <clears throat> John Maxwell said that. That has really stuck with me. There is no hopeless 
or helpless situation with God. He is aware of everything about us, even how we are formed. For you formed me in my inward parts, verse 13. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, O Lord. My frame is not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they are all written the days that you have fashioned for me. He knows the very number of days we're going to be on this earth. He knew us in the darkest places of our mother's womb. He knows you in the darkest places that you're facing even now. There is no place that he cannot work in. I praise the Lord for that. that it's just welling up inside of me right now that we can't hide from him. We can't hide. We can't run. There's no place that you can go that he will not follow you, chase after you, pull you back into his presence, draw you near to him. That is what he desires. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. There's something, something precious about his knowing us, knowing our inner thoughts, the way we operate, our gifts, our talents, everything he knows. He knows that person you hate. He knows that person you love. He knows those days where you couldn't even pray because your heart was so heavy. He knows. He knows last night when you sat down and you decided to eat way more than you needed to. He knows. He knows the mental torture that you are experiencing from the past. He knows it all. He knows who's harmed you. He saw it all. And he desires to bring about restoration. He desires to bring about restoration. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. God has good thoughts for your future. God only has good things in store for you. He can even take the most painful pass and turn it into something precious for his glory if you will allow it. The past can no longer be a crutch for you. He wants to restore you. He wants to bring you into the fullness of his presence. Because in his presence is where we find the fullness of his joy. Amen? Amen. David closes out Psalm 39 with the same prayer. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the path everlasting. This should be our prayer every day. We have to allow the Lord to search. 
we have to allow his hand as it were to go through our home our spiritual home and deal with the hidden things that are in the drawers in the closets deal with the hindrances that keep us from experiencing his fullness the revival that he wants to bring in your life and in the nation and in the church globally this is a global message to the church for restoration and revival psalm 23 3 he restores my soul why does he do the searching why does he do the knowing why does he know every part of us why is it that we can't hide from him it's because he wants to lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake for his glory so that you are a walking living testimony of his goodness so that you are a walking and living testimony of his grace so that you can say I once was this but because of the Lord God in my life because he is a restoration God because he wants to bring about revival in my heart and in my life I am now a testimony of his goodness I am now a testimony of his faithfulness so today my challenge to you is to allow him to search you know you and deal with the innermost areas of your life that are needing surrender to him surrender sounds painful doesn't it surrender sounds like you have to give something up surrender sounds like you lose in this but let me tell you anything you may have think that you may think you're giving up or you may think you have lost he is able to restore a hundredfold and it might not be in the way you expected but his restoration comes with blessings and promises to flourish and to be a blessing to others and to walk with passion and joy and a fervency an expectancy of his goodness the world today has many burdens and I see that the enemy of our soul is doing his very best to place those burdens on us to cause us to carry a heaviness that we don't need to carry God has a hope and a future for us that sometimes we cannot readily see but the process of walking into that future and walking into that hope is so rewarding but we have to surrender to it we have to surrender to the process we have to go through the purging the cleansing of the home the cleansing of the spiritual home the body we have to do it and that cleansing comes from his searching and his knowing isn't it a beautiful thing to be known I mean it's so funny sometimes me and my husband we can finish each other's sentences because we know we know each other and sometimes I can predict what my granddaughter is about to do because I know her I can read her like a book <laughs> my children say that I have a sixth 
sense about them. It's because I know them. It's because they're mine. They belong to me. I raised them. I spoke into their lives with the Lord's help. But you know where I'm going with this. The Lord knows us. He's been speaking into our hearts, into our lives. He can finish our sentences. He knows everything about us, right? So wh why do we think we can have these hidden places within us that we won't surrender to the Lord and then still expect a revival in our lives, still expect a good feeling, still expect to have joy unshakable, you can't have those things and crud going on in here all the time and then on in here. The enemy loves to play mind games with us and God, it's, it's a purging going on in the body of Christ now. Revival is coming, but so is the cleansing. We must allow the Lord to do the cleansing work. Amen. Amen. Well, I would encourage you to go read Psalm 139 for yourself today. It's a beautiful scripture of how well God knows us and the work that he would like to do in us. And as well, Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd. Get to know him as the Lord, your shepherd. It's powerful. And I want to pray for us today. And I want to lift up um, our ministry in Pakistan and, and just pray that if the Lord touches your heart and you would like to give a Bible to Pakistan, <clears throat> the link is in the comments. Um, like I said, $8 for an adult Bible and $7.50 for a children's Bible. So, like I said, you can give a, a Bible at the cost of a gourmet cup of coffee, right? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's pray. Father God, <coughs> I just come before you thanking you, praising you. Father, that you are causing your people to have dreams and visions. And women and children and men and boys are prophesying in your name that Acts 2 is coming alive in the nation and around the world today, Lord. Your word speaks of this before the great and glorious day of the Lord. I've been hearing so much about prophecies of end times, prophecies of revival, prophecies of calamity, dreams and visions backing these prophecies up, scripture being given to prove that they are from the Lord. Yes, these are trying times, but your promises are true. Yes, we look on every side and we see wars and rumors of wars and we hear of earthquakes and famines and pestilence. But your word is faithful and true. There is nothing too hard for you, Lord. And we know you are bringing about a revival in your church and in your people because that is what you desire for us. You desire for us to walk in your fullness and in your power and in your unction and your anointing by the Holy Spirit. We can no longer just be nominal Christians. We can no longer sit in the pews and be lukewarm. You are calling us to a deeper walk. 
You are wanting to do an excavation in our lives that cleans us, that renews us, that restores us. You want us, Lord, to purge the things out of our lives that are distractions and hindrances. You want to be a part of our lives and you want to walk and cleanse every area in it. Oh, we don't hide anything from you. You knew us before we were born. You knit us together in our mother's wombs. You were fully aware of our form before we were even formed. You called us by name even before birth. Every part of us, you know. Every area of us, you are aware. Your word says that every tear that we have shed, you have seen, you have bottled up. Nothing has escaped your notice. So Lord, help us to surrender our lives to you wholly and fully and completely. Do a great and a mighty work in us so that we can run and not grow weary and walk and not faint. So that we can take the gospel to the ends of the earth. So that we can witness to our neighbors. So that we can testify of your goodness in the land of the living. So that we can be a people made ready before you. Oh Lord, search me and know me and see if there is any wicked way within me. Remove my anxieties, remove the hindrances in my life. Help me to walk purely, wholly, sacrificially before you. There is a sense of urgency on the earth today for believers to come together in unity and power and strength. There is a sense of urgency today for believers to live what they say they are. There is a sense of urgency to be renewed in our hearts and our minds. There is a sense of urgency. The Lord is coming. And the word of God says it will be like the twinkling of an eye. The word of God says he will come as a thief in the night. We must be ready. Oh, Lord God, help us. Help us to be ready. Help us to be looking to you. Help us to be calling to you, watching for you, waiting for you. Lifting up our voices to you in praise and in prayer and in supplication. We cannot be timid anymore in these times. We must be bold. We cannot shrink back, but we must press forward. The time is drawing nigh. We cannot flail about anymore, but we must be revived in him. We must be revived. The body of Christ must be revived. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to repent and to pray and to come into the joy of revival, of expectation, of passionate relationship with you.
Help us be ready. Help us, Lord. We cannot do this on our own. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need your leading, your guiding, your direction. Lord, give us a vision of where we can work and where we can go and what we can do for you. Help us to live each day as if today is the day of the Lord, as if today is the day of your coming. Help us to give to those less fortunate. Help us to take care of the widow and the orphan. Help us to show kindness and compassion even when it's not shown to us. Help us to turn the other cheek. When someone mistreats us, help us to continually forgive. When someone hurts us, help us to be humble and not proud. Because the word of God says that you resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Help us to tame our tongues. Your word says that the tongue is like a deadly fire. And so, Lord, help us to tame our tongues. Help us to speak words of kindness and goodness and love. Help us to be salt and light. Help us to be a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Help us to be bold as lions for your gospel, for your faith, for your truth. Let us have wisdom as we speak into these times and as we go about our daily tasks. Let us be in tune with your spirit when you point out someone to us that we can minister to. Let us be in tune with your spirit when we can show care and concern for someone who doesn't know you or who has Brought, bought into the lies of the culture of this day. Help us to show love and care and concern. Oh Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the dream that you gave. I thank you for the scriptures that you used to back it up. And Lord, I pray for more. I pray for more. I pray for more from you. I want more from you. I want to know what's on your heart and your mind. I want to know you like you know me. Help me, Lord. Help me. I can't do this on my own. It's only by your grace and your goodness. Lord, I lift up our ministries around the world, but particularly today, I pray for Pakistan. I pray for believers there. I pray for a searching and a knowing there. I pray, Father God, that you would work in the believers there, strengthen their hearts. They're in the hotbed of the battle, oh Lord. They are surrounded by nations that are seemingly on fire. Even their own nation struggles. Even their own nation is embedded with the Taliban. But there are believers there, Lord, that want to serve you, that want to exalt your name, that want to draw near to you. There are believers who are evangelizing, who are taking Bibles to those that want Bibles, who are holding 
evangelistic events to win souls to you. Lord, I pray, protect them, cover them, provide for them. Make a provision for my sister in Pakistan that serves you faithfully through IWM. I pray for Sister Shazaya that you would protect her health, you would protect her family, you would protect her ministry. <clears throat> you would guard her gates, O oh Lord. <clears throat> you would guard her and make provision. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all. I have shed a few tears. Um, I'm seeing that I may have had an internet disruption. I hope that's not true. I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, next week, there will be no Bible teaching from me. I will be back the week after that. Um, again, I'm on vacation. But I thank you um, for being with me today. Amen, Sister Autumn. Thank you for that. I love you guys. And listen, I consider it a privilege to be able to pray with you. If you ever have a prayer request, you can send a private message through um, Messenger to IWM, and I will pray for you. And I, there are others on my team that are intercessors and consider it a privilege to pray for you. And so, again, if you have a prayer request, send it. We will pray. Love you guys, and I will see you week after next.